Want to hear the voice of God? Part 1. From fellowshipofthemartyrs.com First, what exactly are we talking about? Does God really speak to people today? Yes, in a whole bunch of ways. From a gentle nudge, to instruction through the Word, to using other people and circumstances to speak to you, to sending dreams and visions or angels, and or even conversing directly with you. You can hear God audibly and converse with Him? You're kidding, right? Not kidding. You can absolutely talk to God and He'll talk back. There are millions of people all over the world that rely on God for constant daily instruction on all sorts of things. But there's a difference between hearing God audibly with your natural ears outside of your own head and hearing the inner still small voice. It's pretty rare for God to speak to people audibly like thunder, but there are plenty of folks out there that say they've heard him and the evidence is that once they did it changed them forever. Many of the house churches in China are under such persecution that they can't set a regular time for meeting or even tell each other when the next meeting will be. They all just pray and God himself sets the time and place and tells each to be there. This is totally for real and the birthright of every believer. Wait, people hear the God of the universe tell them stuff? Like what tie to wear and whether to turn left or right? What job to take? What to have for dinner? Not just big stuff? Sure. The Bible says, In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. What do you think all your ways means? And how is he going to direct you if you can't hear him? Yeah, but my pastor said God doesn't talk to people like that. Hmm... Well, God used to talk to people all the time in the Bible. Wonder when he stopped. Did he say he was going to stop? Isn't he the same yesterday, today, and forever? If anything, once the Spirit came in Acts 2, there were lots more people talking to God directly. Never mind the millions of people who you have to conclude are thoroughly and certifiably nuts, including many of the most effective leaders of the church. In order to sustain that argument, you have all kinds of logic problems. Consider this. If God used to talk to people but doesn't now, then we must not need to hear from him anymore. Can that be? By all measures, we're worse off than ever. If there's a war between good and evil, we're losing pretty badly right now and really desperately need to be getting commands directly from headquarters, not from flawed, man-made sources and tradition-soaked interpretations of Scripture. If there's a battle between good and evil, then who would benefit most if the people on the good side were told they couldn't actually hear their commander-in-chief? Now, you know the evil side is absolutely clear to everyone that if you try to talk to their leadership, you will get an answer real fast. Even Christians are afraid to mess with Ouija boards and call on the names of demons because somewhere inside they believe something very real will show up almost instantly. But at the same time, the forces of darkness want us to buy that our God is mute. Doesn't that sound like something the snake would say in the garden? Despite hundreds of examples in the Bible that he's available and accessible all the time, we have too often bought the lie that God is unwilling or unable to talk to his children. It's a lie from the pit, and we've bought into it for too long. If we receive the Holy Spirit when we are saved, then one-third of the Godhead is living inside of us all the time. 1 John 4, 13-17 But he doesn't have anything to say? He's not interested in our daily activities? God's not big enough to know what we should have for lunch. He knows the hairs on our head and monitors our every coming and going, but has no opinion about it or desire to give us advice. What kind of father is that? If we're dead and it's Christ in us that lives, then shouldn't he be running the show? Romans 7, 4-6 through six. Yeah, but my pastor says even he doesn't hear God like that. Okay, well, you see, Matthew 18, 18 says that what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and what you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. It goes on to say that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by the Father in heaven. Verse 19. So could it be that we have whole groups of Christians that have agreed that God doesn't talk to people? And if they were convinced of that, don't those verses say that God will honor it? So maybe the problem is that if you're convinced God won't talk to you that way, he probably won't. And who would you blame? The pastor? Probably not. In fairness, we got to lay it at the feet of the snake and the generations of tradition that have been built up to keep us from being truly spirit-led. There could also be other problems that would keep a person from hearing God. One possibility is that they're on the wrong team, even if they think they're not. You know, it's possible to make up your own Jesus, and you'll get a response from that one about as good as if you were praying to a stick of wood. Another is that they have unrepented sin that stands between them and God, and God has convicted them of it so many times that he's just given up trying to talk to them. 
Oh, and by the way, you're going to have to get over that thing about the pastor being more holy than you. This is a one-on-one relationship with Jesus you're supposed to be having. You can't do it by proxy through the guy that gets paid to hear God, especially if he admits he's not hearing God. We are all the church. We are each temples that hold God's Spirit. Any one of us that are adopted sons of God have the ability to petition the throne directly and seek His face. God loves each. In fact, He's especially fond of those that come to Him with faith like little children. Sometimes pastors have a hard time with that one. This is just crazy. How could this be true? And I never knew it before. Wouldn't somebody have told me? (laughs) Well, I think you underestimate the damage the enemy has done and how long he's been plotting this. The vast majority of the church in the West does not live the normal Christian life. That is, biblically speaking, we are to be full of power and might. We're to be free of the bondage of sin. We're to not conform to the world. We're to be dead to ourselves. We're to be one body and loving and serving each other with all our heart. That's just a few. Can you see how far away from that we actually are as a church? We're not even close. There must be something missing. Somebody left something out. It has to be this. God is supposed to be directing you, and you're supposed to be listening and obeying. Now, who would benefit most from us leaving that little piece out? Yep, the guy in the black hat. Now, what do you think a close encounter conversationally with the God of the universe might do to a person? Trust me, it would change everything. It would show them the power of the relationship they have as adopted sons. They would lose all fear. They would sacrifice anything to keep hearing him. They would obey and walk in his ways. They would know, really know, that God himself lives in them, and they would want more of him. They would want to do the things on his heart, like feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, saving the lost. Probably would be a lot fewer chandeliers in the sanctuaries. Probably would be a lot fewer sanctuaries, for that matter. So if this is a war between good and evil, wouldn't our most immediate and urgent need be to get people to where they can hear clear, timely, reliable commands from headquarters? If you have a guy in basic training that refuses to listen to the drill sergeant and does his own thing, wouldn't you want to leave him at home? He's just going to get himself killed when the enemy starts shooting and leadership says, duck, and he can't or won't hear them. He's no good to anybody. Maybe he could be a supply clerk, but he really shouldn't be on the front lines. But we have the Bible. God's word is what we're to use to direct our paths. Okay, sure. I'm not going to say anything bad about the word. Everything God tells us to do will line up with his own word. But no matter how well you know the Bible, it can't accommodate for every possible situation and what you should do. There's lots of stuff not covered in there, like which of these two jobs God wants me to take. And there's stuff in there that men have been arguing about for centuries without ever getting agreement. Lots of wasted time trying to figure out how many angels can dance on the head of a pin. Oh, by the way, which side benefits most when God's people fight over stupid stuff like that? Are you getting the hang of this yet? Think of it like this. You're in the army, and they give you a manual. All kinds of stuff is covered in there. What to wear, how to salute, how the weapons work, how to survive in a battle, what to eat in the forest, how the chain of command works, even what the enemy is like and how to resist them. There's even stuff in there about what the enemy will do one day, whether they like it or not. It's a really good manual. In fact, it's inspired by God. It covers an amazing array of stuff and could probably handle most any situation. So would the drill sergeant ask you to read it, maybe even memorize it, and then send you into the battle with nothing but that? Are you going to be able to know what to do when the bullets start flying? What about group strategy and deployment of forces and anticipating enemy movements? Is the manual going to accommodate for every possible scenario on a rapidly changing battlefield? Are you sure you're interpreting it right? Is there time in the foxhole to be arguing with other soldiers that are reading it differently? What if some idiot published like 20 different translations and paraphrases of the manual? Well then what? Isn't there a chain of command? Isn't there somebody in charge calling the shots that's supposed to tell you what to do next? Aren't you supposed to be listening and obeying? You want to go into battle without the manual? No. Want to rely on it alone when you have other resources available? No. Want to take an order from somebody that goes against the manual? Absolutely not. But when the bullets start flying, do you want to hear personally and directly from headquarters so you can know that help is coming or call in an airstrike? You betcha. More on this in part two.